Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Zero Hour. I am Richard R.J. Escal. Do you ever have a random thought when you have a minute to yourself? I had a random thought in the break there, and the random thought was how much I hate the song We Will Rock You by Queen. I mean, it's fascistic. Think about it. I mean, you know, the thoughts probably occurred to you that it's fascistic, too. Have you ever sat in a ball game? And listen to everybody sing along to the we will, we will rock you. I mean, it is an extremely fascistic song. In fact, I have a feeling that Freddie Mercury, who is a really smart guy, uh, was actually very aware of the kind of fascist overtones. He, you know, could play with cultural things like that. But that doesn't mean I don't still hate the song. I do. We will rock you. Now, uh, you know, I also find it frightening when a whole group of people, is singing along to something like that it sounds robotic it sounds lockstep it sounds like you could be part of a military march you know on parade in front of stalin or something on uh, may day i don't know so it bothers me and 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 yes that's a random thought here is another random thought the uh the workforce participation the level of men men, this is males now, of prime working age, that is between the ages of 24 and 55, the num- the percentage of those men who are not in the workforce is 16%. That is a stunning rate, 16%. Now, what does it mean? New York Times has been doing a great series on, on these patterns of unemployment. What does this mean? It means that, as they put it, you know, whether they're officially unemployed or whether they're just outside the labor force because they've given up. They're not looking for work anymore because they're retired. I don't know how many uh, uh, men or women under 54 can afford to retire, whether they're in school or whatever, uh, whether they're home care parents, whatever the case may be, uh, 16% are out of the workforce. That's three times as much as was the case in 1968. Now, when you start looking at these numbers and breaking them up, you know, analyzing them geographically, Appalachia is devastated. Uh, Northern Mich- Michigan, devastated. Uh, a lot of other rural rural areas, devastated. What does this mean? Um, you know, in New York City, for example, we did a, a whole uh, monologue last week on uh, unemployment and the Eric Garner case. Uh, in the five boroughs, the percentage of men not working ranges from 70, 17% in Queens to 28% in the Bronx, but drops to around 3% near the Metropolitan Museum of Art on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. So we are living in a highly striated, a highly segmented, a highly specialized society in which some people are profiting uh, enormously from the boom, from the stock market boom, from what is called a recovery and what has been much more than a recovery for a few and much less than a recovery for the many. Um, now all, all of us may get together at a ball game and sing, we will, we will rock you. But the fact is that when you take us out of the stadium and back into public life, we live in a deeply segmented society. If we've learned one thing about that segmented society in uh, the last week, it's that we have a government that serves the few at the expense of the many. We remind you once again of the failures to prosecute widespread criminality on Wall Street. And by the way, many Wall Streeters do live on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. We remind you of the failure of this government to rebuild the infrastructure of this nation, which is likely to cost an estimated $3 trillion, according to the American Society of Civil Engineers, and which would put millions of people back to work. Yet that is not being done, even though we rescued the banks. We remind you of the ongoing misery and unemployment documented in this uh, New York Times report and the fact that we are doing very little about it. We remind you that Eric Garner, Uh, who was uh, strangled and died uh, on the north shore of Staten Island, died in an area of extremely high unemployment and did so while being forced to sell Lucy's or loose cigarettes on the street to a lot of people who could only afford one cigarette at a time. We live in a country made up of a few wealthy 
and many people still struggling. We are not responding to them. Instead, the wealthy are saying to the rest of us, we will rock you. I am Richard R.J. Eskow, and this is The Zero Hour.